Fade out one. Fade in three. Pizza Flicks Television Division presents Suspense. seeing him all day. He must have been following me. Oh, coming this way. I is he looking for me or is he trying to find a seat? There's an empty one. Blonde girl's taken it. He comes. What can I do? Thank God. want anything from me. He probably doesn't even know I exist. It's just that I've been through so much since yesterday that I imagine all kinds of things. If I could only stop thinking about it. And about what happened last night when I got home to the apartment. I ran into Mason, uh, the superintendent up on the landing. He was the last man I wanted to see. Mrs. God. Mrs. God, are you home? Oh. Oh, good evening, Mr. Mason. I, I didn't expect to find you here. Well, I dare say you didn't, but you're getting hard to find other times. What about some of the back rent? Well, you, you know we can't manage it at the moment, Mr. Mason. Next week, I hope. Hoping won't keep me my job, ma'am. You gotta pay me something or get up. Oh, we're doing our best, really, Mr. Mason. Next week, my husband will have something. Well, whatever it is, it won't be a job. Oh, I'm sure. Mr. Mason, Mr. Mason, do you smell gas? No. And if I did, I'd be past scaring. you got to give me something or else. Well, we're doing our best, really, Mr. Mason. run out of me like this. You had to come back. I don't have any luck at anything anymore. Take a chance on this. Ah, oh, what's the use? <coughs> Walton has me locked out everywhere. There'll be someone else, darling. Nah. Not so long as he can say I've broken my contract, nobody will touch me. Well, they practically made you break your contract. How can he expect you to pay him what you owe him if, if he doesn't let you work anywhere? He doesn't want me to be able to pay him. He wants to break me to make me come crawling back. Well, you're not going to. Something will turn up, darling. Oh, I suppose I could get some sort of job for a few dollars a week, but I'll never get out of the red this way. After all, I owe $500. <coughs> I'll get you some tea. Maybe that'll make you feel like eating something. What do we use for food? Some out on the landing. <coughs> hey! Where's 
you get all that? Oh, I managed. What do you mean you managed? How? Oh. Never mind. The ring. Where's your wedding ring? Here. What's the matter, Ray? Do you feel cold? I'm going out. Where? Oh, I just uh, thought of somebody who might lend me a little something. Oh, who? Somebody I ran into yesterday. You don't know him. You're not going back to see Walton. I'd see anybody now. Oh, no. no. Not him. Not after the way he treated you. Ray, you still have some pride. If you go crawling back to that man, I swear I'll never speak to you again. I don't mean that. Why, oh, do Ray. Ray, I mean every word of it. Oh, darling. I I'd rather see you starve. I'd rather see us both starve together than have you do that. Oh, Ray, Ray, darling, whatever you are, you're not a quitter. So you think I'd let you down? Well, even if you did go back to him, what good would it do you? I'll show you how cowardly I am. Oh, Ray. Ray, come back here. So there you are. Well, did it take you six hours to get your job back from war? Well, did Walton enjoy seeing you squirm? $500. What are you doing, dear? Oh, God. What's the matter, dear? Johnny, say, I see you got your new model. Looks pretty good. What do you call that, a Jiggermobile 49? Yeah. Gosh darn, that's some lights you got on there. That come with it? Yeah. Oh, boy, that's really equipped. Well, what can I do for you this morning? Fill her up? I thought I'd have you look over my car, just like Daddy. Well, sure enough, I'm just the man that can do it for you, Johnny. How's she running these days? Oh, uh, not so good. Not so good, huh? Well, let's take a look inside, see what we can find. I want to tell you, this is really a first-class vehicle here. Uh-huh. Well, those spark plugs don't look so good to me. You know, what we might do is uh, replace those with a set of Autolite resistors. How about that? Fine. All right. You know, uh, Autolite resistors are really swell plugs. Tell me, do you find the upkeep on this model is very high? Yeah, especially on my allowance. <laughs> well, some new resistors will help you out on that. Not only do they cut down on piston wear, but they save you money because they save on gas, see? So that'll yep. help the old allowance. Well, let's see here. Say, uh, you having any trouble starting these cold mornings? A little bit. Well, I thought maybe. You see that battery? It's kind of corroded there. Kind of crummy looking. Why don't we put in a new auto light staple battery there? Fine. Would you like that? Yeah. Well, we do, and you won't have any trouble starting on any morning, no matter how cold it is. 
You know, Autolite Stayful is a real battery. You see that uh, thing over there, that cutaway? What's that stuff? That stuff? Well, that's the fiberglass insulation. I tell you what, Donnie, the Autolite Stayful has a lot more plates than an ordinary battery, and then it has that uh, fiberglass insulation around the extra plates, which uh, help it give you that 13% more power that it's famous for. And here's yeah. something else that you ought to know, too. It takes a lot more water. It holds a lot more water than an ordinary battery. You see that glass right there uh, signed by Ripley? Is that Believe It or Not Ripley? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Believe It or Not Ripley. And believe it or not, Donnie, that's the extra amount of water that a safe full battery holds. And what that means to you is that it, it helps you get 70% more life out of your battery. And furthermore, you only have to fill it three times a year. It means less work for me. Yeah. How would you like to have that glass take home with you? Thanks. All right, here, here's something else, too. You're going to be really whipping around with resistor spark plugs and a stay full battery, so you want to keep the hair out of your eyes, all right? Yep. Okay, Donnie, well, you're all set. You can run right along now. She's really going to go. And I might say the same thing to you folks, too. Your car is really going to go if you take care of it with Autolite, resistor spark plugs, and a stay full battery. Remember, now and any time, you're always right with Autolite. And now, back to Suspense, as Autolite continues its presentation of Goodbye, New York. More coffee, darling? Yeah. Don't you think we'd better get out of here? You'd better get away from that window, too. There it is. Five hundred dollars. I could have taken a couple of thousand. Oh, Ray, as if you could murder morally, as if it made it any better that you saw only the right amount. Oh, Ray. Ray. Mary, what am I going to do? You mean, what should we do? No. No, oh, Mary, it's got nothing to do with oh, you. Oh, yes, it has, yes, it has. I shouldn't have called you quitter last night. It's as much my fault as yours. Robbery was apparently the motive for the attack. The sum of $500 and $50 bills was missing. The attacker must have been known for the dead man, possibly some disgruntled former employee. Let me see that. That means there isn't much time. Arrest expected within the next 24 hours. There they are. Oh, wait a minute, I'll see Who's there? It's me, Mason. Oh, Mason, he wants the rent. Here, give it. Oh, no, we mustn't be having uh, any money. Yesterday we didn't have a thing. Oh, good morning, Mr. Mason. Well, have you got anything for me yet? Uh, well, my husband isn't here right now. I I'm sure we'll have something for you next week. I'm sorry, Mrs. Gardner. They told me uptown today's the deadline. You've got to give me something now or get out. Well, well maybe this afternoon. We're, we're doing our best, Mr. Mason. Well, you'd better. I'll be in the building all day. We'd better get out of here. Listen. Listen. Did anyone see you last night? How should I know? Somebody must have. Well, you'd better get out of that suit and quick. Listen, give me one of those fifties. Yes. Here. Now, promise me you won't move out of here while I'm gone. Don't even answer the door. What are you going to do? I'm going to buy you a new suit. Oh, and you better get, better change that shirt, too. Mary, you don't have to get yourself mixed up I'll in this. I'll be back in a few minutes. Three days ago, this 
guy came in here, he acted like he wasn't on the joint. Yeah. Well, listen, I got too few customers. I can't fool around with guys no, like of that. Of course. Please, please, can you take care? Oh, I'm sorry. You were thirsty. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's all right, lady. I'm in no hurry. All right, miss, what can I do for you? I'd like a man suit, please. Size 38. What man? Oh, it, it, it's for my brother. Oh, well, I see. Well, what type suit, miss? Oh, dark blue. Uh-huh. Well, how about the fitting? Oh, I'll take it with me. Well, miss, we don't let suits go out of here on approval. Oh, I'm, I'm paying for it here now. Oh, I see. Well, just a minute. I'll get you one. Oh. Well, that's a nice line. That's guaranteed unshrinkable wool. Most gentlemen like that style, too. You see, it's for my brother. Uh, huh? He's graduating today. Uh, we've been caught short. Well, that's uh, all right, miss, just as you said. Oh, how much is this one? Well, that's thirty-four fifty. Thirty-four fifty. Well, miss, we got plenty oh, more. No, no. Thank you. This one will be fine. All right, fine. All right. Thirty-four fifty. Right yeah. You know. I, I think I'd like a hat, too. All right, miss. What size? Um, a seven and an eight, I think. All right, just a moment. There we are. Well, now, let's see. I think this one with the broad brim will be fine. What, this one over here? Yes. All right. Hey, do you like that style? Oh, uh, yes, that's fine. <laughs> Would you pack it for Certainly. me, please? Certainly. Oh, how much will that be all together? Well, let's see. That'll be... Thirty-four, fifty-four, fifty-three. Thirty-nine dollars exactly, Miss, with tax. Thank Thank you. you. Here's your change, Miss. Miss. Oh, thank you. Please, excuse me. Is there another way out of here? I know, Miss, there isn't. Why is anything wrong? Oh, no. Oh, no. Wasn't that a silly question for me to ask? I, I wasn't thinking what I was saying. There's your suit, miss. Oh, thank you very much. And the hat. Thank you. Come in again. Hey, Joe, come on over here a minute. These women get lipstick over everything, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> Sister, what's the hurry? Hey, give me that package. First, I want to give you a few words of friendly oh, advice. Please give me that package. Take it easy, sister. You won't gain anything, anything by all this running. What do you mean? Nothing, only take it easy. You'll live Please give me that package or, or I'll call a cop. Okay, sister, it's up to you. I won't do it, Mary. This is my headache, and from now on, you're going to keep out of it. I'll give you some of the dough. You hang around here till I find some place that's safe for you to come. Now, now, try the hat, quickly. Well, not too low. That's a dead giveaway. Mary, did you hear what I said? You're not coming. I am coming, and I'm, don't argue with me. The police are looking for me, not for well, you. Well, it's partly my fault that they are. I'm stringing along. You remember the old saying, don't you, Don? Till death us do part. Oh, darling. Oh, all right, darling. It's just a backfire. Oh, this suit was a waste of money. Everybody knows what I look oh, like. Oh, darling, they're looking for a man in a gray suit. Yeah, that's right. I've got to get hurried. We should have a plan. Where should we go? What difference does it make? I've got to keep moving from now on. Yes, we've got to get out of here. You're right. I hope Mason isn't hanging around. It'd be difficult to explain this. Oh, darling, this. darling, don't look so scared. After all, why should anybody suspect us? Oh, Mrs. Gardner. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Mason. I thought you said Mr. Gardner was up. 
Uh, oh, he, he was, but he came back to change. Yeah, so I noticed. Looking mighty fine in his new suit. Looks as if he'd come into some money. Oh, uh, not exactly. Oh, but you see, he has got a new job. Isn't that wonderful? Well, you, you see, they, they gave him a little advance on his salary so that he could buy a suit, suit to work in. Yeah, sounds like a pretty good job. Anything coming my way? Oh, oh of course, Mr. Mason. Um, here's ten dollars on account. Well, that's not very much. Oh, we'll give you the rest in, next week, Mr. Mason, really. Now, put the receipt in the mailbox. Don't forget... Can you hear me hollering at you? I'm sorry, officer. Was that for us? Yes, lady. I want to talk to you a minute. Yeah, she's the one, officer. Say, lady, is there a man around here just now annoying you? Well, oh, I didn't tell my husband, but yes, there was. He your husband? Yes. This guy told me he saw a man bothering you after you bought that suit. And I wanted to find out all about it. Can you give me an idea what he looked like? Well, yes, he was a rather thin man, a man in, a, in a black hat don't remember myself. Why didn't you tell me? It was nothing really, darling. All right, lady, but if you happen to see him again, just let me know. I'll be around. Hey, the police car stopping over there in front of that store. I better go over there and find out what this is all about. Yeah, wait a minute. I'm going with you. Hope your brother likes the suit, lady. Oh, I think he suspects that. Why should he? Well, I, I told the cop you were my husband. What's wrong with that? But I already told the clerk that I wanted the suit for my, for my brother. He, he must suspect that. Imagining things. I'm more worried about that police car. What do you suppose they're after? Oh, I don't know. I don't think we ought to stand here. Honey, from now on, we're going separately. Oh, no, Ray. I'm not asking you to leave me. We'll go on together, but we don't know each other. I don't even want the subway cashier to see us. Well, maybe that would be better. So far, to me, they've been suspecting. You go down on the subway platform, wait for the train. I'll wait a few minutes, and then I'll follow you. Hmm. You've got a, got a dime for the turnstile. I've got nothing but the 50. Dear, I've got nothing but a dollar bill. Put two dimes in the end turnstile. Then when I come along, I can get through. Oh, but suppose somebody else goes through in the meantime. What difference does it make? If he puts in a dime of his own, I can still get through. Well, don't be long, darling. Anything I can do for you, miss? Um, no, thank you. I, I was just waiting for my husband. He must have been delayed. Well, you certainly had a long wait. Uh, well, he's always late. Going on a little vacation? Well, no. Well, we haven't decided yet. Tell me, are there any through trains within the next uh, half hour or so? <laughs> yes, miss. Uh, one, say, about uh, 4.30. Well, yes, miss, yes. But uh, passengers generally have more idea of where they want to get to. Oh, yes, of course. It's just that we hadn't quite made up our minds yet. Oh. We'll probably take the first one that comes along. 
Uh, don't you feel well, miss? Uh, why not go right over there to the waiting room? I'll wait here, down. thank you. Otherwise, I might miss him. Well, he's probably been kept on business. Yes, probably. Could I have a central Vermont timetable and a slip of paper, please? I want to make a few notes. Oh, certainly, sir. There you go. Thank you very much. You're welcome. going crazy, Mary. Everybody seems to be trailing me. Can't trust anybody anymore. I went round and round that station trying to shake them off, but I guess it was just my imagination. Then I thought it was time for the train to leave, so I made a wild dash for it and <laughs> fell down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all right now, darling. We're through and that's the end of New York for both of us. I wonder, is it the end, Mary? I wonder, is there any end for both of us from now on? Oh, I'm so tired. Oh, Alexa, darling. Close your eyes, try and get a little sleep. Yeah, I guess it's, it's going to be all right. Till tomorrow night at any rate. After that... Will I ever stop thinking about it? Will it always be like this? May I borrow a match? I don't know who you are or why I should be worrying about you. I suppose we'll both go on for the rest of our lives wondering who people are, whether we ought to be talking to them. That's a terrible thing. But now I'm too tired to care. All I know is, I hope I never see New York, or you, or any of those other people ever again. Take it, please. Next week, we'll be back with another real chiller diller entitled Flame. And once more, you'll see another top-notch Broadway star. Now, this is Rex Marshall speaking for Autolite, inviting you to join us next week for Suspense and reminding you that you're always right with Autolite.